Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. History on the line. Is it going to be Cooey for five? Is it going to be Botcher for his first? Hi again, curling fans, and hello to you, Colleen. Hi, Devin. I know there's been a lot of talk about history today, hasn't there? That semifinal game between Saskatchewan's Matt Dunstone and Alberta's Botcher was just, again, an epic battle. And what a shot for Botcher to win it, to deny it. Oh. Maddie, the chance to uh, move on to a little bit of history as well. Unbelievable. Of course, we've talked about it this entire week, Colleen. Everyone knows where my allegiances lie. <laughs> that was devastating. <laughs> but, but, but like you said, what a curling game. What a battle. What We talk about chess on ice all the time. That was the ultimate chess game. And that steal and eight when Maddie hit and rolled out, you know, he might be thinking about that one, right? Yeah, and and you know what? You leave a player like Botcher that opportunity to make that run back, which you could have made one of two ways, the way he made it or even into the pile and rolling off. So he talked about the tolerance when he went down to throw that rock. And you, Botcher's too good a player to leave right. that kind of a juicy opportunity. So... I mean, it was just a, it, it's a tough loss for Saskatchewan. However, what a brilliant win for Botcher. So it's well, not a final. Fourth straight final. He's lost the last three. When we had him on earlier in the week, he just seems so cool and calm. He's always so cool and calm. But, call take me into the mind of Brennan Botcher, if you can, going into a fourth Briar final, having lost the last three. Well, first he's got to regroup after a really important game to win the semifinal, and that's high pressure. You don't get a lot of time to to regroup, reset, and move back onto the ice against the one and only Kevin Cooey, who is such a master. Wow. And, um, but yet, you know, we had Kevin Martin on the show earlier, and he talked about that for Botcher, three losses in a row, he's got to figure out how to win it. And this, might, I think, I think there's no question. Every time you watch Botcher on the ice, he gets Ready. stronger. He's a great player. The problem is in this field of greatness, it's hard to say. You know, Gushu could have won this. Dunstone could have won this. Wayne Madaw could have won it. They were all great. The degree of separation in these teams between those top five, including Cooey and Botcher, is so small that on any given day, you could replay tonight's final and another team could win it. Right. That's how good the field is. So here we are, a rematch of the 2019 Briar final in Brandon between these same two teams. Just roll reversals. Botcher was wild card back then and mm -hmm. Cooey was Alberta. And now it's Cooey the wild card and Botcher Alberta. It is the Alberta Provincial Final that maybe a lot of people <laughs> wanted to see, right? Yeah, and now the Briar Final. I mean, they're they're too incredible. The, the field was incredible. This is going to be a great final. I do worry about the team from the semifinal having to turn right back around and you know have eat, regroup, and and play again. They've got to keep that train going, the Botcher train, because Cooey's team is just so good. They're it's so amazing. good. A lot of talk about Alberta mm -hmm. because it's an all Alberta matchup. And who better to talk about curling and the Briar and Alberta than Randy Furby? And Randy's joining us now. And what we, we want it, Randy, because of course, if Cooey wins tonight, it'll be his fifth Briar title as a skip. Randy Furby has skipped four. He's in that log jam of uh, curlers right now with four. Although Furby's got what? How many Briar titles do you have, Furby? I lose count. Is it six? He, he has six, but we're going to take a look at some of those great highlights right now. Then he's going to tell okay. us how good he is at this game. <laughs> Splits it and rolls oh. in to lie three. A tremendous shot. What a shot by Randy Furby. And Manitoba is conceding. They will not play the 10th and Randy Furby. A 
hit and a roll over on top of the yellow. That will make it a 9-4 game and that's it. Randy Furby becomes a four-time Briar winner. Randy, how are you? How are you doing, my dear? I'm doing good. We've been watching a lot of your highlights this week because we had Scott Pfeiffer on the show. Who else did we have on the show? Hey, Medowin last hey, night. Man. That's right. Highlights were a little fuzzy back from when the camera wasn't very good. It seemed it wasn't yesterday these highlights were from. It's from, you know, ways back. But it is nice to see those again. But looking at your winning percentage at the Briar, my gosh, it must be like an eight hundred percent because you've won six of the eight Briars you've been in. Yeah, that, that right? would be about just seventy-five percent, I think. Yes, you're correct, and we lost the final one time too. So, yeah, it is kind of remarkable and uh, kind of surreal, but it's uh, it's interesting to say the yeah. least. So to that point, Randy, uh, now you have Brendan Botcher going into tonight, fourth final in a row. So you were able to play big when it mattered, not saying that Brendan isn't close, but I just asked Colleen what the mindset is. Maybe give us some perspective here. Oh, my God. I mean, I can't imagine. And no, nobody knows what he's going through other than Brendan. I mean, this is his fourth Briar final in a row, and I can't imagine – getting to four Briars and not winning one of them. I mean, that's what these guys are playing for. You know, they work so hard to get there and to lose four in a row. I mean, if he loses, which, uh, you know, it's possible he's playing a great team, you know, this could affect his current career for the rest of his life. I mean, he's going to go through the next 20, 30 years thinking, what if, you know, if he would have just won one of them. But uh, but to lose four in a row, unless he comes back next year and the year after and wins, you know, he'll kind of forget about it. But that's a tough thing to go through. And I think he's got – if he's thinking he could lose four in a row – He's probably going to lose four in a row. So wow. I think he's got to get that out of his mind right now and say, you know what, we're in the buyer final. Let's play our best we can. Not let's think what, what happened for the last three years. What What did you learn from – I mean, you have so many incredible wins. What were the things you learned, for example, from that loss, that tough loss with Pat Ryan uh, to Hackner that was able to push you forward, uh, uh, that maybe Walker's doing the same? I wasn't on that team, actually. Okay. You know, a lot of people think – a lot of people think I was on that team. I keep bugging Pat. He says, well, you got better after you lost to Al Hackner because I came back the following year to play okay. with him. So I, I've never lost the final other than in 2005 after having three victories already. So I'm not one to talk about that. But it, it is amazing how many people think I was on that I'm team. I'm sorry. I had you oh, as no. losing ever. No. <laughs> Here's the key to Randy. I'm going to show you one second. Uh -oh. Talk about going into any final. This is Randy all the time. Like, just like looking everywhere, just looking, looking. You know, I could, you know, Colleen, I, I, I didn't think you'd pull that card out because I, I put some cards on you, but I'm, I'm more smart to leave them in the closet and not bring those out. Little things I, about you. <laughs> I pulled it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because you guys, you did travel to a lot of worlds in the early 2000s. That's that's when they went on. And Dave told you guys were the pranksters. So, Randy, uh, there were some jokes. There's some good times on the road. We had some good laughs and we had a lot of times, a lot of good times with Colleen and her team. And, you know, I, I remember one time we were in Switzerland. I don't know if you remember that time in Switzerland. It's been brought up. I think I think we had the whole hotel to ourselves. We did. For whatever reason. I, I don't know why we had that The guy hotel. owned the hotel and he had the keys to the curling club in a Swiss and, town. And, we, and, and I think we were in between events or something. And we had a lot of time at the hotel. So our team liked to indulge in a few spirits and whatnot. So I think there was one night there we were – we had a lot to drink. Not, not a lot to drink. We are just in in that good mood. And I think one of our players stuffed a pair of curling pants and stuck it outside the door and put some shoes on him and whatnot. And, and Colleen wasn't there yet. And I'll never forget this. And so we were, we were in the room. We were going, oh, oh, my God, oh, my God. And Colleen comes up the elevator. She looks down the hall. She says, I knew it. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> like, like, and, and it was just – they came to our room. It was just, it was just stuff. They, but it, it was quite oh funny. Oh, my God. Those are the good. Those are the good old days. Listen, how was it yeah. coaching Rachel's team? Mm -hmm. What did you learn? Because this is my advice. When when we would be having trouble at the worlds, we'd say to Randy, 
I don't know what I'm doing. He goes, you just got to make more shots. That was Randy's coaching as a skip of yeah, team. Yeah, to be honest with you, they're, they're such an accomplished team. There wasn't a whole bunch I could do in three weeks with them because I practiced with them for about a week to 10 days before. And then at the Scotties, obviously, they're an established team. They're set on their ways. I was just there more as a almost as a cheerleader and give a little bit of advice. You know, I, I, there, I wasn't going to go in there. I told them right from day one and say, Rachel, you got to do this, or Emmy, you got to do this. They know what they have to do. And, you know, so it was just a small time frame I was there, and I was just more of an extension from uh, Marcel, basically. I was just there as a sounding board if they needed it. So there wasn't a whole bunch I could do for that team in, in a short period of time. Right. What's uh, what's in the water in Alberta? A lot of great champions from there and an all-Alberta Briar final, Randy. I, you know what I think? I think it's, uh, it's it's great to have two or three teams from one province. They sort of drive each other. They push each other. You feed off each other. I mean, that goes back to when with Martin and Lukowicz and Ryan. We sort of fed off each other. We didn't want to lose to these guys. And that's what made you better. It wasn't just having one good team. You know, the more team, good teams you have in a province, it, it, it drives everybody else to succeed and beat those guys. So right. who are you picking tonight? That's a good question. Cooley's an old veteran dog. He's kind of, been, you, know, you know, believe it, he's, he's leading the Briar, but he's actually been a little quiet this week. There hasn't really been much said about them, even though they're 10 and 2 or whatever. You know, they kind of sneak in through. They got a little bit lucky to, to not have a tiebreaker and they got to buy the final, you know. So he's a calm, cool guy. You know, he, nothing bothers him. You know, I, I think if he gets up and he's got last rock, which is a big advantage, they tell me nowadays and whatnot. So I, I, I'm kind of leaning to him, if, especially if he scored his deuce early in that game. Hmm. Get the lead. They're a good run, uh, front-running team, aren't they? Totally. Totally, yes. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm nervous yeah. just thinking about it. I hear you. Yeah. Listen, good to see you. Yeah, you too. You know, you know, I, I, I want to tell you guys something. You know, I've been watching your show a little bit. It's a great curling show. It, it is <laughs> long overdue. You guys are doing a fantastic job. And you're, you're probably underpaid. All, all. Is there anybody I can call to maybe help you guys out a little bit, maybe, or something? <laughs> We will get on that right away. <laughs> send me the link and I'll send it in, okay? Awesome. You should be our agent. Thank uh, you. Good to see you, my friend. I'm sorry I, I had you on a losing Briar team once. That never happened. Uh, that wasn't a bad losing Briar team, though, either. So, um, you know, that's still uh, still an honor to be potentially included in that group. Got it. Okay. Got it. Good to see Thank you, Randy. I see you, too. Take care. Take care. Awesome. Yes. Uh, so many wins. So many great memories for that team over the years, Colleen. Yeah, no kidding. They weren't called the Fab Furby foursome for nothing. No kidding. That trip to Switzerland brought back some good memories, so I will say that. We had an entire hotel to ourselves. What year was that? Did you guys? I don't know. It's a blur. It's a blur, but it was back then. Well, they, uh, they won the world championship, I believe, in, in 2002, 2003, and 2005. So that was a, a remarkable time. Yeah, for, for the Fab Four, no it doubt. It really was. Okay, we got to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> the drought for Saskatchewan. <laughs> Devin is uh, 1980. It goes back to, and the great Rick Folk who's standing by for us. But let's take a look at Rick Folk's last Briar win when Saskatchewan took it all. Yep. He's well down. They're going to have to go on it. Oh, uh, he's made Good contact line. with one of them. It's there. Let's see how he reacts. There goes one broom in the air. He gets them both, too. Ah, and great Rick shot. The Canadian Curling Championship. And a standing ovation here for many in this crowd in the Stampede Corral in Calgary. And they're standing up, giving him a standing ovation. Oh, Rick Duke. Very good. Nice to see you, my friend. Rick coached me for a year. You're kidding. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Awesome. We, he came to a Scotty's. He told me to draw more. I was <laughs> there. <laughs> yeah. How are you guys doing? Good doing to see well. You. Doing to really see. well. Rick, I got to ask you, as a Saskatchewanian, how tired of you of being asked about the drought? Oh, I, I get a few calls every year about it. Uh, you know, it's just hard to believe that it's been 41 years, uh, but I guess that's one way of getting on TV every year when I had hair. What about the pressure in Saskatchewan? Because no one loves, you know, that's a, such a curling province and the sport is beloved there. Does that create more pressure? Did you feel pressure wearing the green and wanting to win it for Saskatchewan? Well, we, we certainly did at the time because uh, 
we were fortunate enough to win it in 78 and 79 as well. And at that time, there was no playoffs. And we finished second in the round robin. So we never got a chance to have a one-off mm -hmm. game with uh, somebody. So then in 1980, when Lavats took over, uh, you know, we finished first in the round drop and then had the uh, sudden death game uh, with Al Hackner. So there was a lot of pressure on us, but we, uh, having finished second a couple of years before, uh, there, there was nothing going to hold us back then. We, we were ready for that final. No kidding. You bolted out, if I recall, to a 6 nothing lead, and it was over before the corn brooms could hit the ice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. I think we got three on the first end and uh, stole three on the second. And, boy, it was a long eight ends after that because Zell and his team came after us, and we managed to hold on. Yeah, well, and that's before three rock, four rock, five rock rule. Right. So it was harder to come back back then. But the corn yeah, but, on the ice, maybe you had a few picks or something. What advice would you give the young Matt Dunstone rink that have just have just had a devastating loss? Well, I there's not much advice you can give them. Uh, they're on the right track. You know, I watched them play uh, last year, and then I watched them play this year, and uh, they've improved a fair bit. You can tell their demeanor on the ice and uh, mm. their ability to make some more soft shots. So. They're on the right track, uh, just keep going. Uh, what I've noticed over the years is too many teams give up after one or two, three years without winning. Uh, you gotta take your lumps and uh, get in there. And next time they're in a semifinal, they'll probably win it, so. Did you find that even though you didn't have playoffs in 78 and 79, did you go back to Saskatchewan and go, okay, here's how we need to dominate more? Hmm. Well, uh, that's uh, true. We did do that. Uh, you know, in those days, we had to play in the neighborhood of 25 games to get to a Briar. So nice. our focus the next year was right at Nutana Curling Club in Saskatoon because there were so many teams that were so tough. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were ready for a long grind. And, uh, you know, basically, the further we went along in the process, uh, in the play downs, uh, the better we got and more confident we got because we we'd been there before so when we got to the briar we we felt very comfortable and confident yeah Tana is about five minutes from my house rick uh back in saskatoon where my family is all of saskatchewan was pulling for the dunstone ring today including mm -hmm. the great richardson family uh, if we can bring it up a beautiful note to the team before uh today's game from ernie and the family to, to the Dunstone team. He says, you have the talent to finally bring the trophy back to Saskatchewan. I don't have to tell you about those legends and what they mean mm. to our province. Well, that's right. Uh, they're a class act. Uh, you know, I, I was in touch with Ernie and Sam uh, for many years there. Uh, they would always show up at a briar that we were playing in and they, they were always on, on your side. Uh, there was no doubt. And they were always gave you words of encouragement and, like they're a class act and well, just, you just yeah. uh, saw the note there uh, continue to be. So yeah, and, and they're right. It won't be long until they win. So yeah. Now, who are you picking for the final night? I know you're going to be watching it with a little, you know, Briar, Briar fun tonight, but who are you picking? Botcher or Cooey? I'm going to pick Botcher. Uh, you know, I just like, I noticed Matt Dunstone uh, improving a little bit from last year to this year. So have I noticed in the botcher, they've they've got all the shots and just listening to them in tense situations, like on the 10th end today, they're they're calm and they can see what's happening. So hmm. I I hope they go out there to win, and, you know, and not to not lose. So, you know, if they do that, I, I think they'll win tonight. I love what you just said. What do you notice the difference between the teams that are playing not to lose? Right. Well, that, that's a big thing, especially, you know, like I'm sure it's been mentioned many times that he's been runner up uh, a few times. But, you know, you got to look at the bright side, too. He's better than uh, basically every team in the world except one. Yeah, that's true. Right. True that. Yeah, fascin and fascinating to hear you talk about the nuance and just the little parts of the game, the demeanor, the conversations, mm -hmm. being able to see things clearly, because I'm sure, Rick, there are situations where you can let the game get away from you and you're not making the right de decisions in those biggest moments. Well, that's right. Uh, 
you know, you've got to, you know, as Colleen knows, you got to keep your head on your shoulders because uh, a curly game can <laughs> can be 10 little stories out there. Wow. Things can change in a hurry. And, you know, your team's always looking for the skip to, uh, you know, be on an even keel. And by the same token, the skip is by themselves. They're looking at their three players and you want the players acting like they always do so you can you can put the broom down for them and know what kind of shot they're going to throw at you. So, you know, it comes with experience, but uh, confidence too. If you have confidence in your team and your team has confidence in the skip, uh, good things are going to happen. Yeah. Good well, night. Nice of you to take the time for us tonight. And, 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 and Rick, here's hoping that the next time we talk to you, we're not reflecting on how long this drought is. <laughs> That's right. It, it would be a, a nice interview to have after Saskatchewan wins again. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, by the, by the way they're playing, it won't be that much longer, but it's a tough loss to take for them today. Yeah, yeah. but, uh, you know, maybe they're better than every team in the world except for two. So, exactly. <laughs> you know, look at the bright side. You do. Awesome. Good to yeah, see you. Yeah. yeah, good to see you, Rick. Yeah, okay, pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. It is It is true. The way you approach this has always got to be that your cup is half full. Even though it's a devastating loss, you've got to look at the good. Of I, think, I think I'm going to take that line from Rick where he said a curling game is 10, ten little different stories. stories. You already knew that. The way you tweet, you are you see a story in every single rock. I know, but you're how very talented. You, that how way. you put it? Thank you, Colleen. But it's how time you're in the house, and we're super excited for our fan today. She's not really a fan. The newest fan to curling. But enough fans told us to have her on that we're bringing her. She has to slide herself in. She's bringing herself into the <laughs> show. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Uh, hang on, let me just put my ticker up. Okay, there we go. Um, I am a little nervous, and I had some Nashville hot chicken for dinner, so I have a little bit of the meat sweats too. Oh dear, so, too much information, but so true. But enough fans said we want to see producers, so because we do refer to you a lot, and and we coordinated <laughs> our outfit. <laughs> yeah, but not even on purpose. We just showed up the like this. Funny thing is. You're you're quasi new to um, curling, and we think we've made you a fan. No, we know. Quasi don't. new. I didn't know a darn thing about curling, and then you guys asked me if I wanted to produce this, and you know what? I was super nervous because I thought the curling fans are going to know. I don't know anything about curling, by the way. I edit these videos, and it's been a bit of a baptism by fire for mm -hmm. sure. But that's what I'm learning through this process is how great the curling community is. And they know I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm learning and they're accepting me. And it's, yeah. it's, it's a, because most of the curling fans started the same way you did. So the right, same. exactly. So how okay. much hair pulling out have you done with Devin and I? Um, at the beginning, uh, a lot mm -hmm. because we originally talked about having this be a 30 minute show. Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah, um, nice. And then I think the first night we capped it at 45 minutes, which is like a pipe dream now. It's been almost an hour every night. Right. But I think that's what makes this show so unique and so special is there is no structure. It feels right. like a good conversation between old friends about curling mm -hmm. and you don't limit conversation, right? That's true. Are you okay? Do it yourself. Is but wait, that, Kevin, we can't well, no, I, in This is what I'm saying. Is everyone seeing the brilliance of Sophie right now? This yeah, is what we have to deal with every day. Can you see it? Yeah. Um, okay, but we have to ask our super fan with the boards. Uh, okay. You're not able to center this for me. Wait, Walker, I have to say, bro, we're a botcher. I, you don't know how many graphics I made for these shows, and yeah. I pretty much just tossed them in the garbage because of your 20 yeah. boards. So okay. you're, you're pretty yeah. nice. Colleen, we can't even see it with the glare. Oh, she can Her. see it. There. Oh, I can see. Okay. Oh, can you see it now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She can see. Well, she knows this in the final. <laughs> or botcher. Ooh. I know. She's not going to say. No, she you know what? I am. Oh, I, I'm, I'm okay to say. I know who you're going to pick. It, do you? I do, I, do, I, do, I, do. I do know who you're going to. I'm going to guess that you're picking Cooey. I am picking Cooey. I, I knew feel it. Like he has 
and I'm going to sound super like I don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel like in my editing of all these montages and as you guys call them sizzle reels, that Kui has so much more experience in this finals game and he's been there so many times and he's so calm yeah. um, in the face of so much pressure. So I think he's got this. He has always been that. Although I love Botcher under pressure. Spoken, too. spoken. Listen, like so back, slide yourself out. Yeah. Produce the show. Okay. Nice to have you. We love producing. Awesome it. self. I love and producing it. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Get out of here. Watch this. See? She just made herself disappear. Oh, but this really the, the MVP because to put up with you and I for 20 out of 25 days. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. We, I mean, we like each other, but to have to put up with us, like now <laughs> she's do. in our bubble. Woo. So now we've got to talk about team Canada. Yeah. Because we kind of thought Team Canada might be back in this sure. we and, also and you, know, you know what? It was kind of tough, wasn't it? Because Brad Gushu not being able to go to the Worlds last year, you kind of, you know, yeah. and there's such a strong team. But this was such a great field. Right. So, and, and there were moments where they really struggled. And we're going to bring in Brad right now and ask Brad, how are you after that defeat last night? Yeah, no, I'm 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 okay. Obviously disappointed at how we finished last night, but uh, you know we had some good times this week, some bad times. I, I think the real big thing for us was just uh, you know the lack of energy in, in the building really had an impact, and, and we knew that going in. Uh, we prepared for it. Uh, I don't know if we realized the extent of what it was going to be, but you know that was kind of the one thing I take away. Like we've rarely come out flat in briar games before and we had multiple games this week where we we had that so uh it was certainly a challenge you did mention at one point during the broadcast that these were rocks that frustrated you in your game against quebec how much of a factor because we did yeah. see a couple of misses from you that were most uncharacteristic yeah we we played quebec early in the week with those rocks and we had a really hard time like we were probably six ends deep which is unusual for us to to figure those rocks out. And then when uh, Greg and, and the ice crew uh, paper the rocks there, I guess on Friday night, um, you know, those rocks even changed again and, and, and probably changed uh, for the worse. Um, you know, we took the rocks that Brad Jacobs had played the morning before. And I talked to Brad after our game and, and he had a heck of a time too. I think he curled 61%. I curled 67%. They were, uh, they were a tough set of stones and, and, um, you know, I threw some good rocks that got some real funny results. And then when we had the draw for three and, and Colin, you can um, you can relate to this when you're coming out of the hack and you can feel the rock coming back towards you. you know, it's never a good feeling. And, and I had that feeling when it was coming out. You tried to add on something, but I uh, couldn't add on enough. So it was it was just one of those evenings. Uh, Brad, can I ask you about the paper into the rocks, uh, what you made of that entire situation? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm OK with it. I, I think. Greg and, and John and the whole ice crew are, are some of the best ice makers in the world. And, and they have certain conditions that they want uh, the event to be, to be run at. And, and, you know, I, I don't mind them getting, trying to get more curl. Um, you know, when we played against Wayne uh, earlier in the day, I, I thought it was, it was great. And part of that was we got those rocks figured out early, right. uh, but we just struggled so much uh, the night before it really had nothing to do with, with the rocks being papered. Um, you know, it was just that set was was difficult and, and we didn't catch on. And then once you get down three, you're you're playing exponentially harder shots and right. then you're trying to figure it out and, and it, it can snowball pretty quick, which it did. Yeah. Sometimes it can look uglier than what it really is. What did you yeah. guys say to each other in the post mortem? Mm. You know, I, I, I think we took some positives from from this week, I, I think. Uh, but we also took some things that we need to work on as we head into the trials and into next season. I think what we realized for our team is is that energy and that intensity is, is something that is essential for us to be uh, as good as we can be. Uh, when we had that this week and, and we had it at times, certainly our first game against Epping and, and our game yesterday morning against uh, the wildcard team, Howard, uh, we had that and, and you could see it in our performance. And, and then the ones where we came out flat with, you know, lackluster uh, energy, uh, you could see how that turned out. So I, I think we know what we need to do is just doing it is, is the hard part. 
how much do you attribute the the inconsistency, Brad, to just the way the season has gone? Oh, all of it, to be quite honest. Uh, I think the fact that we haven't practiced together now, I, I understand every team is in the same situation. Uh, but having not practiced together, the run up to the event, I think the the way the event went with no fans, I think all of that had is, has an impact on every team, but sometimes in different ways. Hmm. You know, for our team, I, I think the the lack of fans and a team like Jacobs as well probably uh, were impacted more than some others. And then I think there's some teams that actually would benefit from it. Uh, you know, I think Brendan right now tonight, I think it's uh, it's going to help him. Uh, the fact that there aren't fans there, I think he's uh, you know in a much better spot uh, than he would be if if you had ten thousand people there. I think we lost Colleen. Oh, there she is. I just disappeared. That's the internet. I was in the ether, but I'm sure you guys were genius without me. We're, we're, we're back. We're rolling. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. I wouldn't call uh, hitting the books a sweet escape, Brad, uh, but it is your escape. You're doing master. You're working on the masters. But what's next? Obviously, you're sticking around in the bubble and you're back on the ice Thursday, I believe. Yeah, so tonight I'm uh, right after this. I get into some schoolwork for for a couple hours, and uh, Carrie comes into the bubble tomorrow. She's got to isolate for a couple of days, but we get to practice on Wednesday, and then we get going on Thursday. Um, I think we play one game a day. We might have one game with two games, uh, one day with two games. But uh, looking forward to it. It's. Uh, I told her we got to arrange a call tomorrow, uh, probably over Zoom, to figure out how we're going to play and and uh, who's going to do what because we haven't done it together. And I don't know if Carrie's played mixed doubles at all. So uh, I also told Brett that we need a, uh, a refresher tonight on the rules because I don't even remember all, to be quite honest. It's the last time I played was with my daughter last year in the provincial final. And then before that, it was the trials with, uh, with Val back in uh, 20. 18, I guess. Yeah. Actually, I thought you were going to ask Brett for a refresher on how to sweep. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I won't give him that much credit, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to be doing a, as much sweeping as what I probably should. I, uh, you know, I'll, I'll make it look like I'm putting in the A effort, but I think it's just because I'm probably not in the shape that Brett and Jeff are that you'll just see the sweat coming down. Uh, right. But I'll, I'll, I'll put in a decent, decent effort. We know you're in shape. You own the gym. The orange theory body over there. Yeah. But as as they keep saying on TV, sweep and shape is different. And uh, you know, I do I do agree with them there. It's uh, no matter how good a shape you are, until you start sweeping, you you, you realize you have muscles that you never thought you had. So there is an adjustment period. But the fact that we're only playing one game a day, you know, gives me a little time to recover and and. Uh, I'm going to get Val to sweep a few Meyer shots so I don't have to do those. <laughs> Good, enough. Good enough. Well, you're you're still in the bubble. We'll still be uh, seeing you on the ice, and you'll yeah. get a chance to flex those muscles once again, Brad. <laughs> There's not going to be much flex in Devin. <laughs> you got to have muscles to flex. To yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for taking the time, Brad. Thanks, guys. Nice Appreciate to see you. So, Selling himself short on the muscle department. He's I got mean, him. So, yeah. so good of him because you yeah. know he was so disappointed. And, uh, very. So and he talked about the lack of energy there. You can sort of just understand that when you're used to playing in front of a crowd, to never hear the roar, uh, to never hear from his Gushu fans that go follow him around, that, that would be tough. You do want to look and hear that. I mean, everybody understands why, but the cardboard cutouts kind of almost don't cut it. That's tough one game a day in mixed doubles because the yeah. game is so fast. My right. goodness. Thank God he's got all that homework to do. There's going to be a lot of sitting around. Okay. We are 26 minutes away, but we got a big finish. Big. Uh, what a story. What an absolute story. Uh, Wayne Madaw and this team turned out to be, I think, the story of the week, Colleen. The way Wayne was able to turn back time, the way the team played, they captivated this country, didn't they? Well, it captivated the country, but also the drama of Glenn Howard not being able to play. The drama of you know, Glenn. <laughs> when people heard the news of the Skidoo accident, everybody was first in the curling community so concerned. And then that you pulled out from the um, uh, recycling bin, Wayne McGuire, <laughs> and that he was able, it was, it was just such a great Cinderella story. And I know you're just back home now, so we thank you for just getting off the plane and joining us, Glenn. 
Oh, very uh, welcome. Great, uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me, guys. Um, yeah, a bit of a long day, but uh, back at home and uh, kind of nice. And just on that topic, uh, you know, Wayner was unbelievable. I, I think at times uh, uh, our team was the most consistent as the week was going on. Wayne was leading it. The guys, my, my son, Scott, was the best week I've ever seen him curl. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave and Tim were on fire and Wayne was leading them. And uh, it was such a pleasure to sit back and watch Wayne do his thing because he's so, so good and so talented. And, uh, and again, we talked about how, um, you know, the fact that he's come off a serious accident five years ago, but his leg was a mess. And uh, mm -hmm. to be able to come back and make those shots like vintage Wayne Madaw was just, it was something to watch. I just sat back. I had the best seat in the house. Loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, tons of fun. Uh, I'm guessing a lot of pride, Glenn. Yeah, we, you know, we, we, that was one thing I loved about our fivesome. We, we had a ball on and off the ice. We you made the best of the COVID situation on the ice. We're joking around. I saw a lot of stressful curlers out there and uh, we weren't, we weren't that stressed. We were doing our thing. And, uh, uh, I was so proud. Like I was so proud of all of them. Um, uh, you know, I knew that I really felt we could get to that second round of round Robin play. Didn't expect to be seven and one, but I felt the five and three and six and two is in the ball game. Uh, but the way they were playing, I thought, boy, and a shot here or there. And, you know, we had a good chance to beat Cooey uh, last night and we were in, we were in the mix. So we were only shot a shot or two away. So uh, really, really proud of the boys. I thought they did a great job. Yeah, it was amazing. Well, you know, we have a hot stove. We're calling it coming up in just a minute uh, with Greg Strong and Mike Harris to talk about, you know, this year's edition of Rockgate. It's certainly not the first time at a Briar we've had a Rockgate incident. You can go back to the 90s and there's some epic stories from then. Um, what are your reflections on that now that you've sort of had a full 24 hours to kind of uh, think about it and uh, what do you think needs to change? Well, honestly, guys, I'm still pretty pretty miffed about it. I think it, it and disappointed. I, I just feel that, um, this is the sort of thing that should just never happen. Um, and I, I think you're going to find, if you ask Mike Harris uh, tonight, he's going to say the same thing. It's just, it's, it's, it's such a big part of our game to, to have the knowledge of, 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 uh, you know, sandpapering the rocks. And, and I see a lot of stuff on, on social media today that they're, they're thinking that we didn't want sandpaper rocks. That is not the issue here. Sandpapering is exactly what Brad just said. The, the, the ice makers make the ice to the best of their abilities. They know that they need the rocks to curl. They do what they have to do. They have to sandpaper them. It, it happens all the time. I can honestly tell you, though, I've been to, to 18 briars now and probably 30 plus provincials. This is the first time in my entire curling career that I didn't know that the rocks were sandpapered. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where I think it falls in, in, in. That's where the problem lies. At our provincials, they they sandpaper them usually on a Thursday. We know what's coming. They put a big sign on the on the change room door rocks have been papered everybody take notice it's just something that has to be it has to be told to the curlers and the fact that some curlers knew some teams knew and others did not is is in my mind unacceptable and i i just think they, they have to fix this it's just uh it, it's a huge huge issue and uh, people don't like draw to the button is massive and you mm. you, you try hard you know, especially against certain teams you you've got to get that hammer or you don't win and, mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that's why we lost the brad gushu but our we were behind the eight ball when we didn't know that uh, the rocks were papered. Wow. Um, Glenn, uh, we've been searching for answers and clarification. I'm sure you have as well. Uh, how far have you gotten in that clarity of why this happened? Uh, again, I was, this is where the most disappointing part in my, uh, as soon as I found out and I realized that other teams knew, I went right to the official and the head official. And I said, listen, you know, we, we, how, how did this happen? Uh, the rumor, the, the talk was that we were supposed to receive an email uh, from some somebody from Crow Canada to say that it was happening. We didn't get that. I said, OK, well, what are we going to do about it? Like with time's ticking. How about we just do a, a repractice? Like we should practice. Like now that we know, no, mm -hmm. no reason. And then I asked for a problem. Like, hey, let us just do our LSD. Just let us go throw our draw to the button again after the after the team uh, Canada has thrown. No. Uh, and then I just said, so what's the, and I didn't get any answers. I wasn't getting any answers. And I knew that if it didn't get dealt with right then, after the fact, it's, it's right. gone. And right. I was really disappointed at the reception that I was getting from Curl Canada at that time. And um, so then I, I lodged a protest, which I knew it, it's, you know, the only thing that I like going forward with the protest is they've got to deal with it. And hopefully they'll realize that this is a major issue. Moving forward, communicate with the curlers. It's mm -hmm. not a big deal. To t like, mm -hmm. they definitely put paper the rocks. That is what they do. The ice makers know that. But don't over paper them. <laughs> well, what they're, they're doing their best. The guys are phenomenal. These ice guys are named for their stuff. They may, and I love the fact they do it. Just commute, just tell the curlers. It's, it's you know, it, 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 and doesn't make Remember, sense. Remind me, Glenn, back in the 90s when we had sort of a Rockgate incident, um, 
I mean, the reason why there's serial numbers now on rocks, right, is so that everyone knows this is said rock that you, right. mm -hmm. and the reason why people keep rock Bibles is to know everything about that rock. So when, as soon as you know there is papering, uh, sandpapering, well, the, the, the beauty, and like I just listened to Brad Gushu talk, and he just made the comment that he, he didn't like a set of yellow rocks. Right. And yet after they were papered, they changed. And this is what happened. So if you don't know they've been papered, you're assuming you're going to play with the right. same set of rocks. And then now now it, all, everything changes. And it, it's such a crucial, crucial piece of information that the curlers need. And it's a simple email. It doesn't. It's not a secret. It's right. there's no reason to keep this from everybody. This is what shocked me. And when I found out that other teams knew, it, it was very upsetting. And it, uh, uh, again, I, I think they could have dealt with it differently right at the time. They could have dealt with it at, at the beginning. They didn't. Um, that's the upsetting part. But moving forward, they definitely have to be transparent and communicate this yeah. information to all teams. Well, I think that's uh, well said. We almost don't need the hot stove now. I'm only kidding. <laughs> but you know what, Glenn? As the most senior player at the Briar, I think you bring this depth of experience that sometimes the first or second time Briar people are going, oh, no, big deal. They papered the rocks. But going forward in order to create change and improvement for the game and for the curlers, uh, the transparency is very important. So it, it is. And like, like I said, the, the, the papering is, is they have to do it. They have, and everybody knows that. And I'm totally for it. It's just, you, you need to know when, and it, 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 you know, some curlers have said, well, it's, it's your job to go and ask the ice maker. Well, that doesn't really make sense to me. If, if it's such a crucial, uh, uh, Part of our game and we know it's coming but just just tell us when just tell hey tomorrow morning we're doing tonight we're doing it now we know because yeah. what happened is, is we would totally have done our team practice completely yeah. different had we known because right. we, we had a set we had it all perfect where to put the room whatever and it took us five minutes to realize things are really wrong hmm. i kind of speculated that it was uh, um that the rocks were papered there was another uh, ice technician on the side and one of my guys asked them and he just shrugged his shoulders says, not me, not for me to tell. And I'm going, why is this a secret? And well, I go, are you kidding me? And then, then, then I found it after, of course, then we just didn't, we didn't pick up enough. We didn't take enough ice. You know, as it turns out, uh, Brad Goosey went to the divider, right? On the, on the edge of the T line and the wall to, to draw the button. And we just didn't pick up on it well enough. And, and, and partly that's our fault, but I, we shouldn't have to deal with that. As long as we yeah. knew beforehand, we change our practice totally. Yeah. Well, glad you're back, Satan Sound. You certainly gave your team gave us incredible highlights this week. week, and it was just a joy to watch. And you're dancing too. <laughs> okay, just get back. You might not feel like dancing tonight, but. <laughs> Uh, it was it was it was such a it was an incredible week of curling. Um, you know that you know you watched the I caught the, the the final end today and Brendan Botcher's angle raises. You know that's spectacular. It just yeah. makes for great television. The only unfortunate part is if you had six seven thousand people there, that place oh. the roof would be coming off. And so there, there was highlight reels every draw, and I was yeah, so yeah. impressed. With, the curling was amazing, and uh, I had the best seat in the house, sitting back as a coach, and I'm like looking over here, looking over there, and uh, it, it was it was so much fun. You yeah, well, the amazing thing before they papered the rock, I remember. Remember our show? We were just talking about the crazy oh, razzle dazzle shots. We were saying, "You gotta go. Why? Why paper? Anyhow, who are you picking? You can't do this. Your you, 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 cannot, you know, you know. I'm not. I'm not doing. Right. I'm not doing. All I, all I do know is, it's, it. I think it's going to be one of the best played uh, finals in, in Briar history. I think wow. these two teams, these two teams, are firing in all uh, all eight cylinders. Uh, I think it's going to be amazing, uh, and regardless of who wins this, they're going to be an absolutely uh, spectacular and formidable uh, representative of our for our country. They're going to do an amazing job. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We'll leave it there, Glenn. You've provided us so many great uh, clips throughout the show run yeah. and so many moments over the years on the ice, and uh, yeah. we can't wait to see you back out there again, Glenn. Listen, thanks. For, you guys rock. Keep this. This show's fantastic. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing an amazing job. Oh, thanks. so nice. Let's sure, look for the worlds now. We'll call you. Okay, By the way, I've got nothing to do. Okay. <laughs> we'll call you then. Call me up. We don't either. Why do you think we're doing the show? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime, guys. Great, great job, and thanks very much. Thanks, Glenn. Hot, Take care. Hot stove time. Now. Okay, 16 minutes. So let's get right into it. Let's bring in Gregory Strong of the Canadian Press. There he is, Mike Harris. We're gonna heat it up. Briar final. You just heard Glenn give us a breakdown, but but Greg, why don't we go to you? Because you also had a chat with Glenn. You wrote the great uh, piece yesterday about this. Some thoughts about what unfolded, Greg. Yeah, my takeaway, my first takeaway is that this is a great example of 
a scene where media should be there and could do a much better job if we were if we were on site because you i mean steam would you'd see the steam coming out of glenn's ears you would be able to go and talk to the ice maker right then and currently canada is trying its best to get athletes on the line to us afterwards if they lose a game but there's a 45 minute delay and it's just it's just not the same so we're trying our best but that was my first thought was, man this story would be great if we were there on site. That's a what great do you think, point. Doug? Yeah, that, no, that is a great point. You know me and drama, I would have been spinning in circles. Uh, Mike, what do you make of it? Because we saw your tweet and we saw that way Madaw liked it. What did you say and what are you saying today? <laughs> <laughs> well, change is day to day with me, as you know. Uh, no, I just, I, to, to Glenn's point, I think the, the biggest thing is if some players knew and others didn't, that's the issue. And I think that was Glenn's point. Uh, most most events at some point they pay for the rocks. Uh, that's just kind of the the new normal. You know, I know it's not not doesn't happen at all the events, but uh, I think everyone kind of expects that at some point they're going to just give a little touch up, get a little more curl in the ice for the uh, the playoff rounds. And nothing wrong with that. But if if some know and some don't, that's a massive. Uh, it's it's an unbalanced field which uh, no athlete wants. You want to know exactly what your opponents know, um, and. The, the point that got to me was when Glenn asked the ice maker standing at the side of the sheet and he said, it's not for me to say that is even worse. I mean, just say, yeah, yeah, we touched them up. Don't can't you notice in practice. So there's, there's a lot going on here. I've also spoken to a couple of athletes. Um, you know, I've talked to a couple of players who had the Scotties and, and uh, they said they knew immediately after the first rock was thrown that they knew the rock had been touch up. So mm. Glenn did admit to that. Say we should have picked up on it a little more quickly, all that sort of stuff. But it doesn't really uh, let can curling Canada off the hook, so to speak. I think in these days, modern times, it, it, I, I get it's a weird briar, all that sort of stuff. But send an email to all the players. Hey, we text. We we texted the rocks last night. It takes 30 seconds. They've got everyone's email. Just send a note off. Everyone's got their phones in their back pocket. Right. And uh, this all could have been avoided. Now, of course, Curling Canada admitted that there was a communication breakdown. And they took ownership of that, I thought, towards late afternoon and said they're going to try and work on that at future events. But I, I'm curious, Mike and Colleen, how often do teams check in with the ice maker, with the crew mm. at arena level before big playoff games? Does that happen mm. every time or just yeah. now and then? We checked in. Yeah all the time uh, right. because really back in the early especially the early 90s when it was still sort of the wild west of even ice making you wanted as much information as you could get and you had the mad scientist the great shorty jenkins also at many of the events playing with the rocks playing with the temperature playing with the scrape how much he took off i mean he was he was uh what's the right word for it's like a savant create, right? he was he was creating the system that's here today i mean mm -hmm. he was the guy uh so um you wanted as much information as you could then you'd get on the ice and you'd still have to decipher what was the impact of the weather at some of the events i played in that caused too much humidity and frost on the ice the crowd were you on an end sheet Right. Uh, the rocks, it was all this, It's that's the beauty of curling. There are a lot of intangibles that make a game great or make a game go disastrous for you. But yeah. you always checked in with the ice makers. But I think Glenn brings a good point. If in the Ontario Provincials, they have a notice on the locker room saying, we've touched the rocks, then everybody knows and can prepare accordingly. Mike, what do you think? I totally agree. And uh, we you know we're fortunate here in Southern Ontario that Shorty did most of our Provincials back in those days. And and, uh, and this is even before we knew what touching up the rocks even meant. Mm -hmm. What is, okay, great, you did that. I don't know what that even means. So, you know, Shorty was, he was so far ahead of everyone, the curve when that came to that. Mm -hmm. But the point is that he told everybody, right? And and I think that's where the myth was here with uh, with Curling Canada. And, you know, we, I've coached at the uh, the world and, and, and Europeans. And we get, if something happens to do with conditions on the ice, they send an email to all the coaches. It's very easy. This is not a... This is not a uh, something that can't be overcome in 10 seconds. Right. Send an email if you're going to do something to the ice or to the rocks. This is not hard to do. So it, it's a, it was a pretty big oversight, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately for Glenn, uh, you know, he's alluded to it. They, you know, yes, they should have picked up. But in that game, if you remember, Brad got two to start. Glenn got forced to one. Then Brad got another deuce. It's 4-1. The game's over. 
Yeah. So yes, the hammer is, it's only the hammer, but in that game, in that scenario, and we've talked about this before, but those, that second round of uh, the round Robin, the championship round that those are playoff games mm -hmm. and uh, they, it cost them, you know, it certainly cost them the start of the playoff game. And by the time they picked up on it was, uh, was far too late. Okay, yes. let's leave the rocks for now because yeah. we got prior final in 10 minutes, you guys. And uh, what an afternoon it was. I'm still recovering. You know, my team Saskatchewan. I'm sad for you. I'm sad for you, Devin. What a All of Saskatchewan. That was. <laughs> uh, uh, as Greg and I would say, oh, baby, on the media bench. Uh, <laughs> um, but here we are again. Uh, Greg, we'll start with you. Uh, Storylines abound yet again. Cooey for a fifth and a historic fifth. And can Botcher finally break through? I'm thinking you have your leads already written. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you certainly don't want that, that Buffalo Bills early 90s tag of four straight losses. And Botcher, I mean, coming in looking really great. I mean, what a strong semifinal. But Cooey's confident. He's been there. He's done that. He's won everything there is to win almost. It's like, I, I've got to go with Cooey. I don't know why everyone's afraid to make predictions. I'm going Cooey and Cooey strong, maybe 8 3, something like that. Wow. Uh, you know, wait, before Mike jumps in, Greg, when you say Cooey's confident, he is. But do you, I mean, he's a machine, like he's a robot. Do you think he, do you think he even feels confident? Do you know <laughs> That's what I mean? a great mix on that team. Does yeah, he feel at all? I think I figured it's he's just, a, he's just the same. No, you wouldn't know if it's a, a big final or any, he's the exact same all the time. Okay, Mike, who are you picking? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to deny the uh, the talent on Team Cooey. I think um, I spoke with Ben Hebert uh, right when they made the switch from Colton Flash to, to John Morris. And I think the key on this whole thing is John Morris. Um, he's one of these refuse to lose type of people. You know, Colleen, you had one of the all time great interviews in, in uh, curling in my mind when we talked to John at the fourth end break of that right. mixed double semifinal. And, uh, you know, he's just one of those guys that just will try to find a way to win no matter what happens. And, uh, um, you know, their focus, this is, this is a step for them. I hate to say the Briar Fallen is a step, but these guys are so focused on getting to Beijing. Right. This is a, this is just a step along the way. And they're going to be, uh, you know, all hands on deck. And I look for, they're going to be really, Botcher's going to have to play the best game of the week if he wants to win tonight. So um, Cooey's got the hammer early, big deal. He's got the rock, big deal. Um, you know, if, if I think if Botcher can hold him to one early and get a deuce right away, that's probably his only chance to win. But I, you know, I got to love, Cooey. you got to like Cooey. That's what I was going to ask you guys, how big this start is, because you remember in Kingston last year, Guju got up early. He scored that three earlier in the game and you could just feel that, that sinking feeling of Botcher of, here we go again. So how crucial is he, is he start tonight? You know? Well, even today, like the semifinal, yeah, great game, but boy, they, they really didn't control any of that game up until mm -hmm. Matt Dunstone rolled out in eight. Right. Right. It was, it was really Dunstone's game to lose until the rollout. And uh, then, you know, then Brendan made a couple of great shots at the end, you know, that, that angle race, he makes that shot eight or nine times out of 10 for one, you know, probably half the time for two. So it wasn't that a shot, that big of a shock for him to win on the last one, but, uh, they're going to have to be better tonight than they were this afternoon to win. Mm. Whoa. Good. Good hot stove. I'm looking forward to it. We're glad to finish our last Briar show with you two. Yeah. No, well, no yeah. kidding. Great to be here. Greg, you're going to be writing the post game on this one? Yeah, yeah. Be starting five minutes from now. Yeah, can't wait. Pumped, buddy. Great to see you, Greg. Oh, Greg. We, we, Greg and I have been chatting a little bit on uh, social media, but it's nice to see your face. We miss we miss all of you guys. So yeah, awesome, nice Virtual to see you. Yeah. Too, yeah, awesome. Okay, we're, we're, you took me out of the mix. This would be a great uh, media curling team. I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Briar. Next, Thunder Bay. Awesome. Done. Okay, guys, enjoy the game tonight. Thanks for being on the show, and uh, always good to see you. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Okay, Colleen, apparently yeah. we have a surprise for us. Here we go. There's always these surprises that, you know, we're doing this live. Yeah. Yes. What, we, before we go to the surprise, we're six yeah. minutes away from the Briar final. Really quickly, what an absolute pleasure this has been. I it's mean, it's been fun. And thank you to everybody in Twitter land for joining us, you know, with it. It's been, it's been our pleasure to do it. And we've loved the, um, the way the curlers have embraced it and joined yeah. us on the show. Uh, it's nice to have them in longer conversations. These people are heroes to so many of us across the country. 
and we really appreciate all of their time and that the fans have given us questions and ideas. Yeah. Yeah. The producer so done a great job. It's been a thrill. And to be frank, the reason why we did Every Night of the Briar is because of the fans. The fans both. You. Exactly. Wow. And all we can say right now is you probably haven't seen the last of that curling show. Perhaps not. But to the surprise, let's take yeah. a look. It's okay to be you in, in every fashion of you, and we will all will be better together if we, you know, collectively can be ourselves. Cheers. 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 I'm cheers. 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 When you're having that much fun, the wins and losses don't seem to matter as much. There's there's challenges in sport and people underestimate you and then they lose you, so it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looks looks like it'll be a good time. <laughs> oh, those are some good memories, and thank you for the fans for writing those boards. Did you see those boards? Those were incredible. I'm emotional. I'm emotional too. We get emotional easy though, Devin and I. So yeah, that was a really nice way to finish. Hmm. We should just quit the whole show now. We can't top it. No, I I lost you for are. words, and I'm not often lost for words. That's beautiful. Thank you, you guys. Very nice. Very nice. Hmm. Thank you, producer Soph. That was Soph again. Oh, so thoughtful. Um, whew, okay. Yeah. Um, Cooey, Botcher. Buckle up. Final. Buckle up. Oh, this has been awesome. Colleen. Yeah, it has. I appreciate you so much. Well, call me later. <laughs> I'll be calling you in 10 minutes. Um, thank you, fans. Uh, yeah. Good night. Good luck. Good curling. We'll see you on Twitter, and we will see you again, no doubt. Love y'all. Thanks, Producer Soph. Thanks, Soph.